Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and today we are talking about CryEngine, more specifically the future of CryEngine. Now CryEngine has had a little bit of a rocky road the last couple years, but what is there, the game engine itself is basically a phoenix riser from the ashes. So this is a very different engine than the CryEngine fork you would see with Lumberyard, and somewhat ironically, it is a whole lot easier to use, which was one of the biggest flaws with CryEngine going back in time. Now at GDC, they uh, showcase Neon Noir, which is actually the video you're seeing running in the background. Now, what's impressive here is this is uh, real-time ray tracing without dedicated hardware. This is actually running on an AMD Vega, and it shows or showcases the future of what CryEngine is going to be able to do with ray trace reflections that don't require dedicated RTX hardware. Um, and it got a lot of people interested in the CryEngine. However, at GDC, there really wasn't any new information. In fact, we've had very little new information about CryEngine in general. However, at the end of last week, they updated their roadmap. So so we get a bit of a glimpse into what the future of CryEngine holds, and today we are going to take a quick look at that roadmap. Now, I got a bit of a spoiler. If you are looking for real-time ray tracing and you want it to happen soon, yeah, it ain't going to happen. So that neo-noir prettiness that you've been looking at for the next last little bit, that is not immediately on the road. It's on the roadmap, but it's not right away, as we will soon see. So they did a blog post up, and now that the new roadmap is out there, trying to show um, maximum transparency for what is going on, development strategies, and how things are coming, where the is going to be evolved. It is broken into uh, planned features for 5.6 that are coming this summer, 5.7, which is coming in spring of 2020, and then the long-term R&D stuff that they're working on. Um, and then we've got here, uh, the, their highlights are tool optimizations. In short term, our main focus is to increase the stability and usability of the engine. The focus will be on reflected in the roadmap with, for example, the new in-editor project management system coming in 5.6, along with numerous optimizations in all areas, including rendering, compilation, and memory footprint. And really, when you look at the 5.6 detail line by line, nothing really stands out as amazing. And that's kind of what they're talking about. They're, they're doing a core re-architecting here. And what they're doing is they're moving away from um, kind of an old prefab system to a new, more modern anti-component system, and that's been part of what's been going on in CryEngine for the last year or two. Uh, on top of that, we've also got schematic updates and new features. Uh, schematic is their visual programming system. It's like the every engine has to have one of these these days, it seems, except for you, Unity. Um, and this one basically allows you to you know, program via drag and drop connecting pins, workflows kind of stuff together. Um, Improvements pave the way for our mid to long-term ambitions, which will bring exciting new features, tools, and support for additional platforms. These goals include the rework of the schematic system, which will also bring a modern and modular visual scripting framework that will allow you to create your own game logic without needing to code. Sounds familiar? Uh, the modular behavior of the visual scripting framework will enable other features to take advantage of the system, including, for example, our animation tools. Uh, and also, again, they got the ray tracing stuff. Now, the ray tracing stuff, as I mentioned earlier, is 5.7. So you're not going to see that anytime soon. So let's jump in and take a look at the details of their roadmap. So as you can see up here, they've got things categorized as being either on target, at risk, or delayed. And things are either basically, I don't know if I saw anything that was at risk, to be honest. So uh, they're either on target or delayed at this point. Now we've got a lot of breakdown. So this is the release coming this summer. And you're going to find a lot of this is uh, fundamental stuff, or there's a lot of acronym soup here, but basically we've got uh, remove the deprecated AI system from CryAction, behavior tree UI updates, uh, navigation improvements, including internal improvements, nav mesh exclusion workflows, seed points, and removal of redundant triangles, validation at runtime, detection of unprocessed tiles, debug messages, and rendering output. Uh, off nav mesh link component and then the off nav mesh link refactoring has currently been delayed. Uh, subsystem flexible update order, UQS optimization pass, so round robin update, removal of frame delays, dynamic priorities, improved schedule. So we've got improvements in the animation system. Again, a lot of this is cleanup. So clean up the handling of intermediate formats, deprecate the skeleton list, improve import workflow, attachment system refactoring, and then we've got some delays to the uh, re re redesign of the mannequin system, which is their uh, bone based animation system. Uh, Audio, we have audio component improvements, FMOD studio localization, improved audio memory debugging, integration of CRI ADX middleware, uh, localization for port audio, playback of events in ACE editor, real-time ACE editing feedback, and streaming for FMOD studio all coming. So audio is getting some nice love in 5.6. Uh, the core parts of it are CMake improvements, compilation optimizations, Discord platform plugin, uh, low-level profiling system cleanup, memory footprint reduction, various CPU optimizations under the graphics side. Yes, no ray tracing. 
Instead, what we're seeing is mesh and opaque, mesh and opaque particles casting shadows, multi-layered uh, microfacet materials, opaque part particles Z buffer, particles can generate forces, render optimization paths, and tessellated particle ribbons. Now, truth of the matter is, graphics is not really an area where CryEngine has needed a whole lot of work. Um, Cry physics update, uh, usability improvements, and extend and improve documentations, uh, improvements to the physics integration, uh, physics aware full body IK for ragdolls, uh, pressurized clothes, buoyant cloth, and skinned ropes and ropes built from CGF meshes. So, definitely some nice improvements on the physics side. And finally, we have Sandbox. Sandbox is the name for their editing environment, the world editor where everything is kind of tied together. Uh, asset editing workflow improvements in editor project management, which is their big new marquee feature. Uh, migration of prefabs to the asset system. Now, again, that is a big part of it behind the scenes. They move to an entity component asset based system on the back end. So you're seeing a lot of the prefab, their existing legacy stuff being uh, refactored out or removed. Uh, source control, we got Perforce plugin, common source control framework and integration with asset browser. And then they updated to Qt 5.12, which is their UI layer that they use for the engine itself. And you will see here that is summer of 2019. Now, when we fast forward a little bit to the spring of next year, there are more new features coming. So we got further AI um, deprecations, off nav mesh improvements. This is, I think, oh, no, no idea. Uh, visual scripting based asset behaviors under animations. We have animation entity components, update and review animation related components, uh, character tool core and UX redesign, uh, modularized blend space editor integrate with the asset browser, cry action cleanup, move lip sync from cry action to cry animation, move mannequin to cry mannequin module, uh, implementation of redesigned mannequin. So that's the same thing as over here. So Mannequin is getting some updates. Now I gotta imagine if it's delayed here, it will also be delayed here, but who knows? And the Mannequin uh, UI uh, being updated, Blend Tree editor redesign with Sandbox team. Audio, we have Ace uh, additioning, Ace source control integration, um, audio undo functionality, uh, audio spectrum retrieval from FMOD Studio, multi-listener support and support for Miles sound system. And then the core, we got some really big ticket items here, such as Android support, which is definitely something that they need. Uh, C++ 17 support, generic area system, generic database system, generic message system, generic reflection system, uh, input improvements, add GUI and sandbox to manage action maps, uh, database based input mapping, integration with scripting, job system, modernization and optimization, Oculus Quest support, refactored entity component, resource manager, visual scripting integration. This is the schematic redesign. So animation graphs, entity scripts, level scripts. Under the graphics category, we have area light improvements, custom displacement brushes for terrain sculpting, full DX 12 and Vulcan support in the sandbox. Improve multiple view rendering in the sandbox. LOD Baker, opaque particles using deferred lighting. Optimize dynamic instancing, SVOGI cleanup and refactoring. And then finally, SVOGI or global illumination ray trace support. So that is the ray tracing they showcased in the Neon Noir video we saw bits of earlier. Then we have under physics, advanced physics entity component. Uh, Breakable objects cleanup, move from cry action to separate module, improve usability and ease of setup. Uh, cry physics usability improvements, further physics development. And then in the sandbox, we are going to have a tagging system for the asset pipeline. Uh, create object cleanup, get integration fully implemented, and multi viewport support. So those are the next two major versions of CryEngine, both uh, summer of, of 2019 and then spring of 2020. And then we get into the future stuff. I'm not gonna cover this in any detail because this is, who knows when this is. So this is kind of pie in the sky stuff that they'd like to add. Um, but we will at least go through all of it. Oh, not a whole lot. Oh, no, there's a ton there, all right. Um, so this is kind of where they're planning to go eventually. Um, DX12 on Xbox, I'm surprised that that one would, would take so long. Uh, but you see, there's there's a lot more in the works for quite a ways away, but I'll do videos to this kind of stuff as it gets much closer, because again, this stuff could be two to three to four years out to never. Um, but their C++ stuff or their C Sharp stuff is definitely improving. That's one of the major things that happened with CryEngine 5.6 is they moved to uh, C Sharp as one of the programming language options. All right, so that is basically it. That is the uh, roadmap for the future of CryEngine. Uh, however, if you are interested, if you're heading over to the CryEngine blog, they also did a text-based interview with the people behind Neon Noir that actually walked through the process of making it, what's behind the system, uh, the scenes, uh, the improvements to their GI system that are gonna be coming, how lighting and what support was added for it and so on. Um, 
So if you're interested in learning more about the um, ray trace cry engine that we're not going to have access to until spring of 2020, uh, there is this interview as well. It's, it's a good read from a technical perspective anyways. And that is it. That is the future of cry engine. It's definitely worth checking out. It's, it's an engine that's changed a whole lot. It's a lot more friendly, but then again, it also has a hell of a lot more competition in the fact that Unity and Unreal and Godot are doing all the things that they're doing. And then of course, it's got to compete with a, a, a sibling in the form of Lumberyard. Although, as I mentioned earlier on, I find CryEngine so much easier to get up and started with than Lumberyard. Now, let me know if you guys are interested in any CryEngine content. Basically, mostly like a here's how you get started kind of tutorial or even just like a hands-on style video. Let me know of your interest or lack thereof in the comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.